What's up my fellow contractors, it's Luis Gonzalez here from Contractor State License Preparation and today we will be discussing five tips to pass your contractor license exams. But first, for those who don't know me, my name is Luis Gonzalez, the instructor here at Contractor State License Preparation with over eight years helping contractors pass their license exams. Not only am I a licensed D49 tree service contractor, I did the exact same process you guys are currently doing. So if you guys need help passing your contractor license exams, reach out to the number one contractor licensing school here in California, Contractor State License Preparation. So let's go ahead and discuss what are the five tips to pass your contractor license exams. Tip number one is get your up-to-date materials and choose the best course for you. It is so important that contractors study the most up-to-date materials. I can't tell you guys how many times in one of our nine locations, a contractor comes in having failed the exams, and when we ask them, what are you currently studying? They show us pictures or they actually bring in their books from other states. You guys, here in California, you need to have California material. Every state is different and every state has a different licensing process. So of course, if you're studying books from other states, it will not help you. Also, they're walking in, in some cases, with CDs or DVDs. I hate to break it to you guys, but if you're still studying CDs or DVDs, more than likely the material that you're actually studying is outdated. The CSLB passes new laws on a yearly basis. For example, here at Contractor State License Preparation, I am the instructor. I record the classes on a yearly basis to give you guys not only up-to-date materials, not only up-to-date laws, but find different ways of explaining the information to ensure that our students are understanding the law book, the law material. And unfortunately, some of the CDs and DVDs that are brought into the locations were recorded in 2010 or even prior to that. It's important that you guys are getting up-to-date classes, making sure that you guys are studying up-to-date laws. For example, in 2023, a new law was passed that stated, if you're a C-22 asbestos contractor, a C-20 HVAC contractor, a C-8 concrete contractor, or a D-49 tree service contractor, even if you don't have employees, you will need workers' comp. That new law was passed January 2023, and it's already reflected in the state exams. The year prior, in January 2022, they actually passed the law that states, if the client is 65 years or older, instead of having three days to cancel the contract, they would have five days to cancel the contract. And if you're studying books 10 years, 15, 20 years old, you're not going to be able to get those answers correct. And that's why it's important that you guys are studying up-to-date materials. Now, choosing the best course is also very important because I have a lot of contractors that sometimes walk in and they tell me, well, this is what worked for my brother. This is what worked for my boss. This is what worked for my best friend. And you guys, every contractor is different. All of you have different schedules and some of you retain information in different ways. So we're not interested in what worked for your brother or for your boss. We're trying to find what works for you. And to find what best works for you, you have to be honest with yourself. If your English is low, I'm not gonna go ahead and tell you choose the fastest course possible, right? If your schedule is jam-packed, you're always busy, I wouldn't suggest a six-week course. I would suggest a course that has a higher level of preparation and more time in the classes. Choosing the best course for you, not for someone else, something that best fits your schedule and how you can uh, actually retain more information. And tip number two would be maximize your time in the course and in the exam. What does that mean? I have a lot of contractors that come to me and tell me, I haven't studied at all. But two days prior to my exam, I'm going to sit down, lock myself in the room, and then just hit it hard. Study, study, study. And to me, that's a losing strategy. You guys, it's going to take you anywhere from three to four months to get your license. Even if you're the most intelligent contractor on earth, it's going to take you about three to four months. Why? Because that includes state processing time. When you send out an application to the state, they're not going to respond to you from one day to another. 
It's going to take sometimes six to eight weeks just to receive a confirmation letter. Instead of losing those six to eight weeks, you can use that time to study and really understand the material. Trust me, we want to make sure that we're using as much of our time as possible to pass the state exams. Now, as contractors, we're always busy. Our time is always dedicated to our projects and in, in the extra time that we have, we try to provide that to our family. But this is a ticket out of that, right? So we need to take advantage of every day possible that we have to make sure that we're studying and understanding the material. Now, when it comes to maximizing your time in the exam, when you guys get to the exam center, they're gonna take you to your computer, put you in front of it, and put headphones on. Focus on your exam. You get three and a half hours per examination. But I'm gonna tell you guys this, when you're in there, within the first 30 minutes to an hour, you're gonna start seeing a lot of people stand up. People are gonna be standing up, and you don't know if they pass the exams or not. And even though that might not seem like it's gonna bug you, when you're one hour in, answering question after question after question, it does get to you because it starts getting in your head. Why am I taking so long, right? Why am I barely on question 15? Trust me, it happens, but it doesn't matter. Focus on your exam. You get three and a half hours to answer 115 questions and you only have to pass the law exam with a 65% and a trade exam with an average of 69%. You get three and a half hours per examination. Three and a half hours for the law, three and a half hours for the trade. And the best part is you can actually schedule them apart now. You can schedule your law exam first and then a week from now, the trade. That is an option through PSI. And the third tip would be focus on one exam first if needed. Remember, when I say that every contractor is different, it's because it's true. Some of you, maybe we're not the best in school. We're, as contractors, we're really good with our hands, but when it comes to opening up a book, it might be a little different. So if, let's say you open up your law book and you're overwhelmed with the information, I would definitely suggest you focus on one exam first, pass that exam, and then focus on passing the other exam. Remember, we have 18 months to pass the exams with the CSLB with the contractor state license board. So if you're overwhelmed on one exam, focus on one exam first, then study to pass the other. Once you pass one exam, you don't have to retake it again. You can focus on each exam individually, and that is a winning strategy if needed. There are some of you that are gonna pass it on the first try, both the law and the trade, and you're able to do that because that is you. But some contractors are different. So if this applies to you, it's a good strategy. And the fourth tip would be, don't try to remember questions and answers. That is a losing strategy 100%. In my eight years doing this, everyone that's ever done that always fails, right? Because they don't, they don't respect the exams. There's a lot of information that goes into your law book and your trade book. And not only is it about how well you do the work or questions about the work, it's also about knowing your responsibilities as an employer. It's about knowing some of the CSLB, Contractor State Licensing Board laws, right? You have to know what construction clauses are mandated to be put in your contracts to make it a legal contract in California. There's so much information that you have to know as a contractor, and the only way you're gonna be able to pass the state exams is by putting in the work reading the book and understanding the material. Because if you understand the material, it doesn't matter how they give you the question, you're going to be able to answer it. But if you try to remember questions and answers, they change two or three words in that question, you're automatically gonna fail. And the fifth and final tip would be, focus on getting your license first. Now, I know a lot of young contractors that are really guilty of this, right? They're so excited to get their business up and running that they start taking classes on taxes, on marketing, and they want to, they want to build a good business plan, et cetera, but they don't even have the foundational piece of their construction business. You getting your license is a foundational piece. 
your insurance agent will be asking you for your application fee number or your license number to even quote you insurance. Guys, focus on one thing first. Trust me, we all want to grow our businesses. We all want to work on our logos, on our websites, on our marketing, everything. But we got to start with one thing at a time. You got to focus 100% of your attention on getting your license first. Once you pass the exams, you can breathe that sigh of relief and then start focusing on other aspects of your business. But getting your license first, that is number one priority. Because once you have your license, you can start marketing. You can start building your website, start working on your logo, start making contracts, start uh, uh, setting up those appointments with those tax preparation or accountants. But getting your license is first. You got to hone in. You got to focus. Once you do that, you can focus on other aspects of your business. If you guys have any other questions, leave some comments down below.